You know, it's been said that suicide is a death like no other and stands alone. You're constantly besieged in your own mind. Why couldn't anything have been done? Here in the Intermountain West, the issue of suicide is an issue of guns. Everybody's got a state flower and a state bird and a state tree. We have a state firearm here. A lot of LGBT kids, especially trans kids, they're not just rejected, they're ejected. I, I figured if I just disappeared, nobody would notice. People call our clinic for one of two reasons. They want to kill themselves, they have PTSD, and in most cases, it's both. I got home. Nothing was the same again. Every single emotion you can imagine, you feel that when you lose somebody close to you from suicide. Keller was our only son, and we miss him greatly. He has given us, however, the gift of you. It's not common that gun owners health professionals, suicide experts come together. But in places like Utah, it's becoming the norm. I think everybody can agree on educating the public and protecting our loved ones. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Suicide doesn't discriminate. And the people who I've interviewed are, are perfect examples of that. When you work with someone who's struggling with suicidal thoughts, you're, you're fighting with death. And when they shift, I mean, you can feel it. You can feel it in the room the moment when life is starting to win. It's intoxicating. There is a proverb that offers, tell me a fact and I will learn it. Tell me the truth and I shall believe it. But tell me a story and it will live in my heart. <laughs>